I don't think there's any real symbolism for me with the circle. However, there is a compositional challenge within a circle that I've always kind of been interested in. I've usually done that compositional kind of thing with a square and I've never used a circle. So the first one I did was the white tondo and I didn't really know what to think about it. I sent it to a friend of mine in California, Joe Lewis, who's an artist also, and he sent me back um, a Michelangelo tondo, which was strikingly similar to the one I had just made. And it really kind of blew my mind and gave me some kind of affirmation that this was probably a good direction to go. I've been working with the golf bag material for several years. It's a material that seems to not want to cooperate with my intentions for it. In that process, there's a lot of tug of war, um, a lot of wrestling, a lot of stress and uh, emotions spent. I think in that process comes something that I don't expect as a result. When I am finished, I'm most of the times happy with uh, the results I've achieved. Taking a vessel, if you will, an object that is meant for leisure. And the kind of emotion I spend with that material is the exact opposite of the emotion that you would carry out onto the golf course. The fact that the golf bags are meant to be, or manufactured to be durable, to have longevity, to stay together and not necessarily come apart, those elements of that material are the thing that kind of is kind of a catalyst for me. If they came apart easier, I don't know that I would get the same work. Certainly Philip Gustin is, I wouldn't say he's a direct influence, but it's hard not to make that connection if you have a hooded figure. Um, so I do look at him from time to time. And of course the Michelangelo and Nancy Grossman. I can't say enough about her work. I've never been that familiar with her work in terms of a kind of a studied relationship with it until really until very recently. I'm almost kind of ashamed to say that, but as I look at her work, the kinship with the way she worked with leather and or vinyl um, and the way she incorporated zippers and the way she, um, she kind of manipulated the material to do what it was she wanted it to do, uh, I really identify with that process. I don't remember the name of the piece, but I remember seeing, it might have even been online, a piece, a vertical piece that I had never really seen from Chamberlain popped up. And it made a stunningly like immediate influence or impact, I should say. Um, and I didn't look at it too long. I didn't want to look at it too long. Um, I didn't want it to kind of like sear into my brain, but I, I was uh, aware of its impact. And I thought, I understand what he's doing there with that material. And I want to know if I can translate that with my own materials. And I let it sit for a couple of weeks and I finally got a piece of wood and I just said, I'm going to make an attempt to visit that place because I really understood the language and having never seen that piece before. So I wanted to know, can I converse in that language? Um, I started and I made corset, uh, which I love. Target 51 is probably, I'm gonna say it's probably the most personal piece in the show. Target 51 really is about um, my father's dying at age 51. He died at 51 when I was 30. So for the last 21 years, I have been kind of aware of this age out in front of me, this target age, if you will, that I wanted to get to. When he died, I automatically thought and continued to think for the next 21 years that maybe something will strike me down at you know age 50 51 whatever and i wouldn't live that long so when i did have my birthday in uh january um, i i made it to age 51. the physicality of actually making the work really is the overriding characteristic of the work, I think. If the work, again, if the materials were easier to handle, I don't know that I would get the same result. Um, a lot of what happens in the work is the direct result of how frustrating it is to work with the material. I have to say that I rarely, I rarely kind of know what's next. Um, Working with this golf bag or working this material for the last 15 years 
at each stage I thought, okay, that's it, I've exhausted it, I can't really do anything more with this material. Um, so uh, at each stage something else revealed itself. So in a sense I've kind of let the material kind of guide me as to where it might want to go next. At the same time I'm coercing it to do what I want it to do. But So it is, like I said, it's a tug of war. Um, it's a wrestling match and um, like I said, I really would not have it any other way. I kind of, as, as frustrating as it can be to make the work, um, that's how I, th those are my ideal conditions. Um, I don't want serenity.